Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Thank you for stopping by this channel. I'm Christian, and uh, this is 4-Bit. Uh, we're rebuilding this car. This is a wide-body Lotus with a supercharger kit from an Exige, and it's pretty cool. So I'm sitting out here for no real particular reason, actually, but, but I am going to tell you that in this video, we got this car to a point where the surface is good enough to accept paint. The question is, how did we get to that point? Well, that's what this video is going to go through, because there's a lot of videos on YouTube about how to do bodywork, and then there's a lot of videos on how to do paintwork. But bridging the gap between the two, how do you make sure that surface is good enough so that no imperfections show through when you actually go to paint it? Well, that's what we're going to be doing today. So, without further ado, enjoy the rest of the video. Each body panel needs primed and sanded to accept base coat, which is the color, and the clear coat, which is a clear layer of protection on top of the color coat, which gives a glossy surface. What we need is one uniform surface and the primer that covers the entirety of the car so that the paint can properly bond to the surface when we spray the base and clear without any imperfections in the surface or color, and I'm achieving this by sanding all the panels and spraying filler primer on certain areas that require more work than others, and then at the very end I'll cover the entire panel with one final coat of filler primer to be sanded down to the perfect surface ready to spray base and clear. For those who are new here, the process of repairs goes from fiberglass matte and resin, then to a greenish brown fiberglass filler, and then the third step is a pinkish body filler, the next step after that is a lighter body filler called lightweight filler or glazing putty, which is the white stuff. And finally, to a gray rattle can filler primer. So the deeper, more structurally compromised the imperfection, the further back in the list we have to start, and then work up from there. Keep in mind that before every step I clean the surface thoroughly with wax and grease remover before recording. While the vast majority of the front clam was finished in the last video, this last portion that remains required further attention. While it looks like you could just fix that area so simply, it's such an odd fitment to begin with in a place where any imperfection would be visible by comparing the body line to the door's body line, and it makes the situation far more difficult than it seems, unfortunately. So here's where things get especially tricky on the repair process. 
your body filler, whether it's spot putty or fire glass filler or whatever, it cannot serve as a structural component. So when you have to span out beyond a few millimeters on a fiberglass body, you actually have to bond new fiberglass to the piece so structurally it won't break off the part. So here where I had to extend the piece outwards, putting filler on it was simply broken off just by pressing on it. You actually need to back the whole thing with fiberglass, which is the structural portion. And here you're seeing the same issue with the rear clamshell. There are three areas were cracked and they could not simply be filled with a filler of some sort. You have to feather out the edges with the sander to give enough surface area for the fiberglass to actually stick, otherwise it would just break off. It's like if you snapped your pencil in half and then tried to glue it back together. There wouldn't be enough surface area to keep the adhesion. I used the sanding block and tape to keep the very thin repair area flat while it dried because the room for error on such a thin piece is extremely slim. Also bear in mind that the two diffuser mounting points underneath the rear clamshell required some off-camera work because it's very difficult to film while attempting to manipulate the fiberglass in place. Yeah. After getting to this point we can finally start seeing how the front clam looks on the car with a modified corner and I gotta say if there is a hell I'm certain my eternal punishment would be being tasked to perfectly line up body panels on a car because it's incredibly infuriating and I can't do it. So I figured I would take the aluminum foil and shape it as a reference to work off the car that way I didn't have to line everything up and risk smacking the radiator because it's clumsy moving the big clamshell. I could also compare it with the other side using this method, helping me conclude that I need to sand off some of the corner here. Put some fiberglass filler down to mix it and it looks like a T-Rex. Just thought I'd add that. Both of these sides require me to drill out the bolt holes again, so I'm gonna do that off camera because it's hard to film. Said I just don't know what I've been doing lately, baby. You've been on the blow, and you ain't stopping, bitch. You crazy, and I already know. Well, only faintly, I won't make it. You a stupid hoe. You try to act real, but you fake it. Now I'm on my own, you know I'm on my own. Oh, yeah, now she hitting my phone. Yeah, why you feeling alone? Yeah, I 
I cut part of the two fender panels to better fit against the body with the resized wheel wells we did a while back, and then got to assembling the car to see how it looked. But no matter how hard I tried, I could not get the door into the correct position with equal panel gap all around, and it didn't help that I was uh, missing a bolt for the door arm, so I gave up for now. And then I noticed something furry in my dashboard next to where all of my very important wiring is and yes it was a mouse who has been dead and rotting there for I don't know how long without me being able to smell it for some reason and I looked everywhere I could not find where this mouse chewed which is truly amazing this was a very respectful mouse apparently that being said I'm gonna get this thing on the road and it's just gonna like it's just gonna catch fire probably so anyways, I, I then decided to fill the holes for the grill because I have a mesh one which won't be attached that way. So it required fiberglassing underneath and filler in the holes, otherwise you could just punch the filler out beneath.
The arches of all the fender flares took so much abuse from my random modifications and the unrestricted sanding that it felt impossible to get the sanding to yield a perfect curve and not be lumpy and uneven. So I brought this piece of wood to my friend Hunter's because he has a CNC machine and that way we could cut this into a sanding block with a perfect 27 inch diameter matching the fender flares mostly. But in the meantime, I sanded the newly primered areas of the clam and radiator sill pieces to get close to a perfect surface so that that last spray of primer I could do before paint. I'll be leaving the sanding of that last coat of primer for all the panels in the next video when we do all the painting of color and clear coat. We'll do this all before the paint. As this video is already long enough, I gotta cut it off. After sanding with the 320 grit, you can see the reflection of my lights on the surface and you get a hint of what the part will look like once it is painted fully. The goal is to get everything super uniform and free from any defects because any imperfections at this point would be seen in the final product after painting with the base and clear coat. This particular part had a few areas which needed some lightweight body filler and sanding, specifically in the areas I repaired quote unquote many videos ago and if you've been watching the past few videos you should be seeing a trend here uh, also the random areas of mismatched colors are like yellow and stuff that's normal that's just from the primer being sanded through and then the final layer of primer we do will cover that completely break down and see it out it's all your fault cause I know you won't see it all Breathe out and feel it out It's not your fault And I You better feel yourself Sky up is your eyes so blue Cause I don't Have to think at all So, on the topic of fixing previous mistakes, this crack that I filled in before had cracked again. So, I put fiberglass behind it this time because even though, even though I couldn't identify the crack before, like where it cracked on the backing, regardless, I reinforced the back and then we'll be filling it again like the other panels.
remember that curved sanding block I was talking about earlier? Well, once it was CNC'd, I started lining up the fenders on the car and marking where the two rear pieces match up. My brother Colin helped mark the holes for me to drill where I could use the two bolts to hold two pieces in place for both sides. This ensures that I can get the best arc shape I can because otherwise my attempts were never going to yield good results. So I drilled at the markings and left the pieces separate for now so I could fiberglass out the edges to be sanded back with the proper curve. There was buildup on the inside from my random fiberglass activities before so I sanded all of it back on each flare until they were ready to accept new fiberglass. I found out pretty quickly though that adhering fiberglass on the abrupt drop off of the edges caused it to pull up and required filler work on the gaps. And the solution to this later was to put fiberglass filler on the edge before applying the fiberglass mat and resin so the gap was filled while structurally supported from the back. It, it looked it looked like this. It sounds complicated, but it's, it's really not. <laughs> If I give you my heart, girl, would you give it back? Running round in circles while you running out, so keep you running that. Baby, I can't take you back. Settling these scores, but I'm not keeping track. Wanna keep it real, I keep this shit a stack. Your head over here, and you should show me that. You gotta show me that. And I need some closure if we're getting closer. I can't hold you, sip mimosas when I told you. Conversation got an older, try to keep it, that's the motive But we're only getting colder and I don't wanna get over it You got me like, where you at? Like, baby, where you at? You got me like, where you at? Like, baby, where you at? If you weren't feeling me, you could've told me that Now you got me just like, where you at? Like, baby, where you at? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not tripping over you, baby You just could've did it different if it could could've told me from the start that this ain't working for you lately No, I'm guilty of this too, but this the worst for me, baby I was worried all about what could've been when it never was And I did the first, maybe I deserve what was coming to me But it hurts to know that you don't want me and you can't be homie When you got what you wanted, you didn't want it But when you couldn't get it, you gotta have it No, this foolish desire is a shitty habit, baby I ain't no better, but still you got me saying Where you at? Thought of missing you, gave me a heart attack If I gave you my heart, girl, would you give it back? Baby, I can't take you back Settling these scores, but I'm not keeping track Wanna keep it real, I keep this shit in stack I wish I was recording this because it would have been pretty funny Well, for you, not for me I just snapped my finger on the mouse trap I just put up uh, it didn't hurt as bad as I thought it would, but it's also because my fingers are numb because it's really, really cold out. But anyways, that mouse that was in my dashboard before was magical or something because I can't figure out where he chewed the wiring, but he is haunting me from the grave because I can't tell you how many times I have replaced the peanut butter on that mouse trap. I, I, I don't understand. There's a mouse, somebody must be playing tricks on me. I'm sure this mouse is laughing at me from the grave. He's like, his, I don't know, sons and daughters are coming over to, to this mouse trap and, and taking the peanut butter and then somehow not setting off the trap. I don't understand, but nonetheless, I can't figure out where he chewed, so. Your head over is and you should show me that. You gotta show me that. You got me like, where you at? Like, baby, where you at? You got me like, where you at? Like,
Oh. That'll be all for this video. I've been sitting in this car babbling for the past 30 minutes. So, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed, then uh, I hope to see you in the next video. And if you didn't enjoy, then... The next Lotus video, we'll be painting it. I know I've been promising that for the past, like, 10 videos. But, th but this time, this time it will be true. Uh, the Aston Martin will have a new video coming out soon because it just turned one year old of my ownership of the car 93,000 miles almost 94,000 miles daily driving an Aston Martin that is my only car other than this so thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> hello hello but anyways uh... Dirt. What was I saying? <laughs>